Hello everyone and welcome to Studio TK's basic twining tutorials. Today we are going to start twining. So um, a couple things I want to discuss before we go any further is these rods. Now they are not only here to keep our salvages, our edges nice and straight, but they also have to be treated as the warp. So not a separate warp, but part as the last warp on each end, each side, I should say. If you keep that in mind, everything will go smooth with you. So the rod and the last warp next to it are one and the same. Now I have taken a, two pieces of fabric, a lovely green and a red, uh, to give you some contrast, hoping that you can see. And I've sewn them together just using a basic back stitch. Um, I've gone one way, back again, and knotted it up, and I'd say maybe a quarter of an inch or so. Now, these you can leave, um, if they're sewing, they can go on the side, no problem. They don't give any extra bulk or anything like that, um, and leave your salvages quite nice still. If you're using the slip, or um, not slip, the slot or slit knot that we um, showed you yesterday, then you never want to have those on the edge because these little tails sometimes will stick out and uh, like that and they're awful hard to tuck in and uh, just doesn't look that nice so if you are going if you're going to do all your joining with the slit uh, knot method then i recommend that you pull it in about there and then begin your twining But we are going to go with this sewing one because I want you guys to be able to see the contrast right away. So to begin, if you remember, we made these little loops at the beginning and the end um, when we were warping. So when we start, we want to go take our weft, go through the little loop on the left hand side through and behind the loop and the rod and through <clears throat> just it where you want now another thing you don't want to start twining up here otherwise you're going to bash your knuckles so you want to bring it down a little bit and to begin you take the weft that is in your left hand Cross it over the rod and the left hand side of the loop. Cross it over. Then bring it through the loop and behind the right hand side of the loop. Pull it through. You want to keep some tension, but you don't want to pull on it like you're tying a knot, but you want to keep it, you know, snug. So the weft that is in your left hand, you cross it over the warp and the weft that is in your right hand. So you cross it over top of both. See, over top. And then you take it, the left hand one that was in your left hand, you put it behind the next warp and then pull it through to the front. So cross over the warp and the weft, cross over behind the next warp and out through the front. Cross over the warp and the weft on the right hand side then behind the next warp and pull it through to the front cross over top of the warp and the weft behind the next warp out through the front cross over top behind the front. 
cross over behind to the front. Cross over behind to the front. Cross over, cross over behind into the front. Cross over behind into the front. Just continue that way till we get to the end. Over so you can see, cross over, get rid of these little strings as you go along, you'll be thankful. Less to clean up later on. So, cross over and behind the next fork, out to the front, cross over behind, out to the front, over behind, out to the strings again that continue all through the process. So <clears throat> now that we're at the last warp here in the rod, remember like I said before we treat the last warp and the rod as one. So cross over behind the warp and the rod because they are one and the same and pull it out to the front. Now, before we make our turn, I always like to move my row up to where it belongs. Get it up there as far as you can to begin with. There. Now to make the turn. Remember that the last warp and the rod are one and the same. So it's the same action. Take the weft that is in our left hand, cross it over the warp and the rod, one and the same. The warp that is behind, bring it out to the front. So crossed over and then in behind the rod and the warp and pull it out to the front. We'll do that one more time. So the weft that is in the front on your left hand side, cross it over the last warp and the rod. They are one and the same. Cross it over in behind And out to the front. So now it's the same action as it was when we went from left to right. Now we're just going right to left. So the weft that is in our right hand goes over the rod and the warp that is and over top of the weft that is in our left hand. So cross them over, cross over, and then in and behind the next warp. So cross over, in and behind the next warp. Cross over, in and behind the next warp. Cross over, in and behind the next warp. And we'll just continue that way. to the end. So cross over the weft that is on your right hand side, crosses over the warp and the weft that is in your left hand. So cross them over, in and behind the next warp, and out through the front. Cross over, in behind, out front. Eventually you get yourself a nice little rhythm. Just move this over again for you guys. Cross 
over, bring it in behind and out front. Cross over, in, behind, out front. Now, when I get to the end of every row, I always adjust my rows and push everything up. This way it keeps things nice and straight and you don't have to do any adjusting um, when you come to the end of your textile. So now this is where the loop is and our last warp and our rod, of course. We are not going through the loop again. It's already locked in place. We are going to go and treat the loop as if it's not even there and this is all one warp. So the weft that is in our right hand goes over top of the warp and the weft that is in the left hand side behind the loop, which we are treating as our last warp. So behind it and behind the rod because they are one and the same and then out through the front. A little bit better. Now the weft that is on our right hand side goes over top of our loop which is our last warp and the rod goes over top crosses over and then oops sorry in behind the rod and the warp and out through the front. So now this is treated as one. It is no longer a loop. It is a warp. So I'll just get that all up there. And we'll begin to twine again, going from the left to the right. So the warp, or the, sorry, the weft that is in our left-hand side goes over top of the rod and the warp that is closest to it and over top of the right-hand weft, so it crosses over, in and behind the next warp, and out through the front. So cross over, in and behind, and out front. And you just continue like that until you get to the other end. Now, I do want to say that this is, um, I'm calling this basic twining because it is classified as the basic stitch. It is also known as counter twining. And um, the reason being for that is when you go in one direction from left to right, your stitches are slanted from left to right. When you go back from right to left, they're slanted. Um, right to left. <laughs> so anyways, um, it does make, kind of looks like it's been braided. And oops. But it is classified as basic twining or a counter or counter twining. That's a bit of a tongue twister. So anyways, we're getting to the end here again. I'll do one more turn with you. So here's our last warp and our rod. They are one and the same. So we cross over and behind the last rod and, or the last warp and the rod. Bring it out to the front. Adjust our row quickly. everything all nice and snug in there. See how it nicely snugs up? Then the warp, or sorry, the weft that is in our right hand crosses over the last warp and the rod and the weft that is in our left hand crosses over, goes behind the rod and the raft and out, or the rod and the warp, sorry and out to the front. Then the weft that is in our right hand crosses over the rod and the warp. They are one and same. And the weft that is in our left hand crosses over, 
behind the next warp and out through the front. And then we just continue to twine. Now, um, I, I'm going to point this out to you. You can clearly see our warp um, at the top. If you don't like that look, um, whatever, uh, I, I, if I'm using a white warp, I usually do a couple of rows of white at the top and then you don't see or notice the uh, warp. So, and that's just a preference. Like I said, it doesn't have to be done that way. I just like it that way. Um, so each to their own. So I will also say, normally what I do, because you know you saw how it was a little bit wiggly, I will do my two rows of, let's say, white or whatever, I, my border, let's call it, and then I flip my loom over. So I will show you that. Whoops, I already did, so we move it here. So, get in there. So now you can clearly see that you you don't really notice the warp so bad at the top. Also, I have one of these handy dandy little bag clips holding my little bag clip. <laughs> Sorry, and holding my wax. So now that I am at, uh, I've got my two rows that I want, I want to change my colors. And I don't want um, to do it here with a slit knot. I want my white to stop completely. So what I do is I go back. And yes, I did go through the loop there, but it's not necessary, like I said. Just do that, and, um, keeps things a little tighter. So, oops, sorry, knocking you around here. So, so this is going to be my last stitch and I want the white to stop. So for me to sew on new strips, I have to cut this material. So what I do is the one that is crossed over the warp and the rod. I tuck it in there as if it's going in um, and I'm going to make that stitch. And then I hold my thumb there, pull it out, because I know the material will be tucked in behind and you won't see it. I bring it, oh, just a little bit more. Snip it there. Keep the little strip. Now I know this one crosses over or um, crosses over in the next stitch. So I want the white to end back here. So I cut it right off. I'm sure you can see that at the rod. And there you go. So then I pull these out. where it's comfortable and I add on my new strips of color or whatever I want onto them sewing um, with the needle and thread using the back stitch. So I place the new one on top, sew across with my back stitch and uh, do both ends and then I twine back and Continue to twine and I will have my color change, a solid color change. So I hope that helps. Anyways, welcome and, or thank you, I should say. And um, if you have any questions, please be more than welcome to uh, leave me a comment below or message me. And uh, happy twining, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow and learn how all about the woe of row. Um, and... Uh, how to finish up our textile. Thanks everyone.